Welcome to Season 8, Episode 30 of the Ubuntu Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be interviewing Les Pounder about OGCamp 2015. We we'll also have some command line love, and we'll go over your feedback. I'm Mark, and joining me this week are Alan. Hello, hello. Laura. Hello. And Martin. Hello. Ah, how are you all then this time? Great. Jolly good. Excellent. Very well, thank you. What have you been up to since last time we spoke then, Alan? Oh, since last time? Oh, loads. Uh, I've been making um, some silly games. I've been uh, having some time away from Ubuntu and away from computers, using computers boring. to make make games. <laughs> so <laughs> I've not been, <laughs> not been very successful. No, just taking my mind off, you know work stuff by doing fun stuff making and i've been trying to do been getting into web sockets and multiplayer games and all that kind of stuff which is good fun cool Ooh. so when's your mm. first uh indie title going to be on steam <laughs> yeah I, i'm not quite there yet after like three days worth of uh evenings coding i'm not quite at putting it on steam or in you know or a kickstarter i shouldn't let that it. stop you well no <laughs> <good> one, yeah <laughs> You call it in Python? Uh, no, I'm using I'm using something called Construct Two on Windows, uh, which generates HTML5 games, which are cross-platform. So they it'll generate mm. desktop games for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and also mobile games for cool. basically any platform, which nice. is cool. Mm. Laura, what have you been doing? Nothing. Oh, how's the Java coming? Eh, not done so much. All right, then. <laughs> not made a game and put it on Steam. No. No, 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 that's next week. Oh, wow. oh, okay. Martin, how about yeah. you? Uh, I've been learning how to build the Linux kernel the Ubuntu way and then getting it hosted in a PPA. So uh, this is for Entroware, who uh, kindly gave me one of their laptops a little while ago. And the touchpad isn't fully supported in Linux. And I've been working with another bloke to get that touchpad working. Ah. And I've been making patched kernels and touchpad works. So... Very is the, about that. Is the Ubuntu way of making kernels different from any other way of making kernels? Um, well, no, the, the underpinnings are the same, but it's about, you know, the packaging. So they all, all the Debian packages come out the other side that you can then, you know, install and uh, split packages and stuff. So it's actually learning that technique and how you get that into a PPA was documented, but in like four different places. So I've just pulled it together. Cool. Nice. And, uh, I was strolling past a pawnbroker's the other day and I found a oh, Yola phone in the for window for 65 oh, quid. Too. Yeah. That's a, so a Yola phone for 65 uh, quid. So I've got, yeah, mm. got a Yola phone for 65 pounds, yeah. Are you Ooh, collecting all the Linux phones that there are now? Yeah, I need a Firefox phone. phone and yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Joe a lend of my, my Yola phone and he's gonna give me a lend of his Tizen phone, so. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Mark? What have you been up to? Uh, well, in uh, in part two of my laptop saga, <laughs> my new motherboard finally arrived from China. So uh, I've been installing that, and now my laptop works, and it will charge again. And it also has a better Yay. processor and better graphics to boot. So that was nice. Wait, you've got... And a no soldering required? No soldering required. Lots of screws. You've got a replacement m laptop motherboard yes. that's different from the one that was originally in your laptop? Yes. How does that work? I thought all laptops were like, you know, one unique motherboard that is blessed for that that case. Well, it, it, not quite. It's basically there's a, another. So I've got an A. Well, I bought an Asus ZenBook 32A, uh, which had um, just in, integrated Intel graphics and an i5 processor. There is also another uh, another model which used the same chassis called the UX 32VD, which had NVIDIA graphics and um the option of an i7 processor so i got a motherboard which was the um 32 vd motherboard which is exactly the same footprint as the uh the original one and does it all work with the ubuntu or linux whatever you're yeah. using just stuck it in plugged my hard drive in booted into that hard drive and it worked ah, cool awesome yeah all right should we get on with it let's do that Now, we're pleased to have on the line, I say on the line, uh, you know, like we're an old timey telephone call away from our, our guest, but, uh, we've got 
on the internet, uh, we've roped in Les Pounder. Uh, hello, Les. How are you? Hello, I'm good. Thank you very much. Super. And so um, people may have heard of Les Pounder because you're quite prolific on the internet. <laughs> uh, where where would they have recognised your name from? Crime Watch. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I jest. I jest. Um, apparently I write things for magazines that people enjoy reading. So big win. So um, yeah, you've you've been you've written some um, some of the lug uh, pieces for um, Linux format, is it? Yeah, Linux format for just over five years. It's been now. Wow! Wow! Didn't think it'd be that long. Wow! Yeah, <laughs> many moons ago. Um, I started off writing for them. Um, let's see, it was a favour for the original team when they were doing the magazine. And they wanted someone to do the community pages. And I was just writing in saying, hey, there's these great events going on. I'm going to them. They're really cool. And then they went, do you want the page? And I'm like, okay, yeah. And <laughs> it sort of snowballed from there, really. Awesome. Cool. So as well as as well as well uh, Linux format stuff, I know you're into Raspberry Pis. How did you get involved in that? And what, what do you do with Raspberry Pis? I got into Raspberry Pis by being one of the mad people who at 10 to 6 in the morning on the 29th of February 2012 was there refreshing the CPC website, hoping to get one. <laughs> um, oh, you you were stopping money. everyone else getting one, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, I, I basically just created some sort of massive server farm, just keep clicking for me. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, I was there, I picked one up, and when I first got it, it was a case of, what do I do with this? It's a Linux computer. Yeah, I know Linux, I can play with that, but then it's a case of... What do I do with this? And over time, I sort of learnt a few bits and pieces. But it, it wasn't until I became a freelancer in 2013 that I actually started to seriously knuckle down and work out what this little board could do. And now, I'm really happy because now I can program. Because in 2013, I couldn't program. I had to learn. So I can now do Python. I can now do electronics. I can now make robots run around the room chasing people. Hopefully not going to kill them. It's funny we Excellent. we often think about like the pie being aimed at kids, and yeah, you know, I know you are a massive kid, but yes, uh, you know we we often think about it being you know tailored for kids in schools and you know to get them started with programming because they wouldn't have seen you know any code before. Um, mm -hmm. What what kind of things have you you know as an adult, uh, um, I assume, uh, <laughs> been been doing with uh, with Python and the Raspberry Pi? All sorts. I mean, serious stuff is like um, weather stations using uh, temperature data and weather information from uh, Open Weather Map, that sort of thing. Um, using the sense hats to uh, measure gra uh, not gravity, um, acceleration and forces, that sort of thing. These are all proper scientific things to do with it, and it's really cool that I can now do this because um, I understand, allegedly, what's going on. <laughs> but, but I also like to mess around and play with things and use this serious data in, in weird ways. So I made... Just for a proof of concept, um, a weather station that when it detected what kind of weather was in the area, it would play a musical track to depict that piece of weather. So it's and raining being, men, for example. Uh, I didn't go with that one, but that's a great backup. Thanks, Mark. I think you should definitely do that one. Somehow I must have gone with Rihanna uh, for Umbrella, because ah. there's a lot of quotes in there for weather. And being that <laughs> I, I live in the Northwest, we have quite a lot of rain. Um, so yeah, I, I use this serious data with some music and a bit of Python called Pi Game, a library which lets you do all sorts of weird multimedia and games things to mash up real data into this fun little program and great fun. I enjoyed it and I learned a lot from it. Yeah, it's fascinating how you can, you can bring together like stuff that people would consider semi-serious and you know utilize it in different and interesting ways we we went to um a conference in london where people were using the frequency of earthquakes in india mixed with you know drum sounds or something to you know show um how you know people are affected by you know make, making you realize how frequent they 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 were by you know hitting the drum more frequently that kind of yeah. thing and it's only with this open data and you know the tool open tools like python that you can you can do that you can be as creative as that really isn't it yeah that's it i mean python is the conduit you have your creativity you have an idea and you can rapidly prototype it with python and do something great 
I mean, the benefit with the Raspberry Pi is we've got these wonderful GPIO pins, which can connect to all sorts of electronic gadgets and gizmos. So I can take Poundland toys, I can take serious data sensors, I can do anything that I want, mash it all up, and then just spit out the results and play with the data and make the robot start move based on the weather. Anything you can think of, really. It's just mad. Awesome. So I think the last time we saw you was probably uh, nearly a year ago at Og Camp in Oxford. Would that be right? That's correct, yes. I was the one behind the bar drinking scotch, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've been involved in Og Camp for a while now. You've been one of the uh, key organisers of, uh, of Og Camp and community wranglers. Uh, how did you get involved in that then? Strangely, it was via Ubuntu. I no did, uh, yeah, yes way. <laughs> yeah. Back in 2010, that was my second odd camp, uh, in the Black E in Liverpool. I ran an Ubuntu install fest with, oh, let's see, it was Stuart Ward and Ajaz Muhammad. And we basically installed Linux and Ubuntu and everyone's machines that weekend, and it was great. And I enjoyed what I was doing there. I thought, it's great. What can I do more of this? So I got in contact with some some weirdos who run a podcast. And they basically said, yeah, come along and do some crew stuff if you want. And basically, I got the alter ego of the chief and (laughs) long may he reign. Um, And now I I get to tell people what to do for an entire weekend. And they get a mug and a T-shirt as compensation for it. (laughs) So there's uh, uh, this was uh, you know, a very uh, crude way of segueing into uh, the <laughs> fact that Old Camp is is coming up. So can you tell us a little bit about where it's going to be and you know anything and everything you know about it? I will have a go. Yes, I'll condense it succinctly. So well, no, you can Old take Camp. about seven minutes or so if you like. <laughs> seven minutes, no problem. I'll, I'll, I'll fill seven minutes. So Old Camp. 31st of October, so it's Halloween our camp, so there's going to be a nice Halloween vibe to the whole weekend. It's in Liverpool, which is pretty much its spiritual home. It's been there the most times it's ever been run. And we're mm-hmm. back at the fantastic JMU, uh, Liverpool John Moore's University Building on Brownlow Hill, which has served as well in the past. It's a great venue. It's massive. It's got all the facilities that we need. And it's also got a Greg's, which is four doors down on the right. <laughs> awesome. So... See, me and Laura were northern as we're like, yeah, Greg's, nice one. <laughs> we know where we are with Greg's. Oh, yeah. So we're there, we've got this great space, and we've got some great ideas. So first of all, ooh, let's see, 2012, we had the first open hardware jam at our camp. Massive success. We had Pete Lomas from the Raspberry Pi Foundation there, and he brought along ooh, hundreds of Raspberry Pis, and he sold them. So much so that two crew members had to escort him to his car because he had a nice big wadge of cash in his pocket. (laughs) Yeah. Not saying anything about Um, Liverpool there or uh, the the people who come to our camp there. But yeah, yeah, I get it. Did did I say anything about Liverpool? No. (laughs) No, no, Lovely people. No. (laughs) Lovely people. It was just that he wanted to feel a bit safe because, you know, big wadge of cash, he might go and spend it. (laughs) (laughs) So he he was there. Go on. The open hardware thing was really cool because it means you've got like people hanging around doing hands-on things as well as just going to the talks all the time. Yeah, it's back this year, bigger and better. We're working with um, the team behind the Liverpool Make Fest, which was a, a one-day oh, nice. Make a Fair event that happened in Liverpool in a couple of months ago. That attracted three thousand people in one day. Whoa. Wow! Okay. Holy moly! That's that incredible. was mad. That was their first event as well. Wow. They just come in and went, yeah, we're going to have all these makers. And these makers were everywhere. There was Daleks there. There was makeup effects artists. There was drones. There was all sorts. 3,000 people. And for some reason, they thought, hey, we're going to help out our camp and get loads of people to come to that. And they are. Brilliant. Wow. They're, wow. Getting, they're getting loads of makers. So we're going to have some fantastic ideas going on. We've got um, a, a nice little game that's going to be played as well. We've got a shooting range that's going to be there. And this is a Nerf gun shooting range that's powered by Raspberry Pis and Arduinos that can calculate your score. And this is exclusive, so (laughs) keep it quiet. You heard it here first. You heard it here first, indeed. Because we only found out this afternoon when Dan said, Hey, Les. (laughs) (laughs) 
we are going to have everyone who walks through the door is going to have an RFID tag. Oh. Yeah. Which you can use to play the game, which will then track your high score oh, in the game. Nice. So you can have a competition nice. over the weekend to see who's going to get the best score. And now I'm not saying there might be some prizes kicking around. There might be. But it's going to be good. A nice bit of cool. fun there. Excellent. So there's the, 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 we have the hardware area. Then there's like exhibition space where various projects yep. can have a little table. Um, what, what have we had uh, in the past? We've attracted quite a lot of lugs in the past and also some big organisations. So in the past, we've had Fedora there. We've had, uh, let's see, East Lanx Lug have been there. Some weirdos from Blackpool called Blackpool Lug, they've been there. And they've all been mi- mixing around with people from O'Reilly who've been working with their books, and uh, Josette Garcia, who was there to talk about the books and also evangelise. Mm-hmm. We've had the uh, Hacker Public Radio team there, and they've been interviewing everyone over the weekend. Yeah, basically. basically. If you were walking around, <laughs> they'd just stick a mic in your face. Yep. <laughs> yeah? Yep, Absolutely. And it's just it, these crazy mix of people are just there on the tables. So the the small lug that has, you know, eight members mixing it with O'Reilly, who've got hundreds of books on a table and turn over millions of pounds. It doesn't matter who you are. You can have a table at our camp and you can talk about whatever you want. But we also have the space there in the rooms for you to talk about whatever you want in front of a live studio audience and tell them about whatever you love. So it could be that you love Linux. It could be that you love Windows. Don't know why. <laughs> But you, you can also say you love ferrets. We won't judge you. Yeah, exactly. I've got a Windows 8 tear tablet. All right, shoot me. Um, but yeah, it's it's great. Our camp brings out these crazy people. I'm one of them who all just come along for a weekend, talk about whatever they want to talk about, and then they go away, then come back the next year. And it's just like a nice weekend away for geeks. So, it's brilliant. so if you do have something which you want to talk about, you, you might be listening to this and you've got an idea and you think I'd like to tell a bunch of geeks about this cool idea I have. How does that whole thing work? Do you just... Uh, turn up and start yelling at people in the foyer you could but you would get kicked out pretty quick okay. um my team of crew will take you down like trained ninjas <laughs> yeah, and they will <laughs> but each one of them has now received a black belt with a 46 waist but um <laughs> no we'll have rooms there we'll have a schedule that you can add your talks to on the day so you'll get a room you'll get a time and you can talk about whatever you want in that room excellent Are there lightning talks? That's to be confirmed right now, but more than likely there will be. Excellent. So I guess there'll be more details about all of this uh, on the website so people can uh, prepare themselves sufficiently in advance? There will be. Brilliant segue. (laughs) Yes. um, Ogcamp.org is the website. There's also a fantastic video on there that explains what Ogcamp is better than what I can because I'm rubbish. And it will tell you all about Ogcamp. It will have an interview with Dan on there. Uh, FYI, when Dan recorded the interview, he was slightly tired and hungover on the Sunday morning, so ex- excuse him. Yeah, He's the one who's like uh, Paul Hollywood, but in a cowboy hat. Yeah, a bright no, red, a red cowboy hat. hat. Yeah, well, it, it's a hat and it's red. Yeah, I, I've no idea what style it is. <laughs> well, yeah, so we've got the open hardware jam, we've got the talks, we've got workshops going on, we've got stalls that you can go and visit, we've got a shooting range... We'll have some other madcap stuff that I'll think of between now and then. You'll have crew there that can entertain you, that can tell you where the nearest Greg's is. We'll have drinking on the Friday nights. We're going to organise a party venue for the Saturday night as well. And then, of course, we'll have the chill out on the Sunday night where everyone just goes, ah, thank God that's over for now. Excellent. And reads all the reviews. Yeah. And uh, (laughs) are you looking for sponsors? If any sponsors are keen to sponsor us, that'd be fantastic. Yes, any companies out there that want to uh, help us promote free and open source software, the community, everything about that, please do get in contact with the team. Um, We can probably, uh, you might not know this, Les, but we can probably semi-exclusively announce that uh, Canonical, uh, supported by the, uh, or the Ubuntu community supported by Canonical, are one of the sponsors of OCAMP this year. Um, we just had that approved uh, last cool. last week, so awesome. uh, yeah, excellent. That's good news. So uh, yeah, we'll have some. We'll we'll probably have a, an Ubuntu stand, I would think, uh, in the exhibition space. Maybe show off some Ubuntu phones, tablets, that kind of stuff, um, and uh, maybe some stickers and stuff that people really? can grab you, on the way. Did past. you say? Did you say tablets? 
um, might have said that. Yeah, <laughs> might have erroneously <laughs> said something. I don't know everything I just said. Something on an out, NDA. Cut it out, cut it out. <laughs> Big phones. Big phones. Yeah, just massive phones. <laughs> yeah. So is everybody on here going to our camp? Of course. I should hope so. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 I can't. I can't wait. Yeah, we're going. We're going to all going to go on a road trip and stay in a house, which makes me sort of think of the like Big Brother. It house. does kind of sound like some sort of like um, sitcom situation, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I sort of keep imagining there's going to be this man doing a voiceover narrating everything we do. Day two in the Ubuntu house, <laughs> <laughs> yes. and Poppy has accidentally inserted a banana into his ear. <laughs> that could happen. One. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I think we've covered everything. So, uh, where do pe- if you if people want to find out more or get involved, where do they go? Or we'll join the crew? Mm. Basically, if you want to know more about our camp, go to ourcamp.org. It tells you all about the event there. The website will be getting a bit of a spring clean, so to speak, when Dan gets better because he's poorly at the moment. Get well soon. We'll have some more information on the website ASAP. Probably in the next. Is there week. A- is there a link on the website to the Eventbrite tickets? It's embedded in the page, I believe. There is, yes. It's embedded in the page. Cool. Oh, and it's free, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's a free event, but you can donate if you wish. Excellent. Awesome. Well, thanks very much, Liz, for coming on and uh, telling us all about everything um, and putting us straight on Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you in a few weeks. Take care, Liz. Thanks. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye. Sit up. And now it's time for command line love that I can't do in a sexy voice, so I won't. Um, what you think I can? Oh. No. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we had a bunch of command line loves uh, that either don't work or don't work anymore. So I've replaced them with a different one. And uh, this is quite a handy uh, tool. You may be aware of two tools, one called head and one called tail. Yes, that you may use to yep. look yes. at mm-hmm. the, the top few lines of a file or tail you might use to look at the bottom few lines. Well, with a little bit of said and a couple of characters, you can print the first and the last line only of a file. And I've sometimes wanted to do this with a file that's got like a date stamp at the top and a date stamp at the bottom. And I only want to see the, t- the first and the last line. This is quite a handy little thing said with a couple of parameters, which we'll put in the show notes. And bam, it just prints out the first line and the last line. And that's it. How cool is that? Um, Pretty cool. Quite cool. Mm. <laughs> Why? Uh, I've, I've never Why? found myself. I've never found myself wanting to do this. I'll be honest. Well, this is what I always find with the command line loves. Well, yeah, okay. So I I use it when I have um, something where I'm logging to a file, yeah. and I want to see how long something took. And so I echo a date at the top of the file, and oh, I okay. echo a date at the bottom. And so the easiest way to just see how long that took is just echo the first and the last line. And I often find myself doing a head to see the first line and then a tail to see the second line. And this is a lot faster because it's significantly fewer characters to type. So yay. Cool. Yay. Sounds cool. Okay. You're n- n- not that and impressed on that then. bombshell. Oh, fine. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> And now it's time for your feedback. Uh, Brian Vanderbrook emailed show at Ubuntu podcast.org. For years, I've been fetching my podcast with a bespoke command line podcatcher that I wrote myself in Python. It's always one. When the season eight switchover occurred, it stopped working on your podcast. Using Python's URL lib 2.url open on the og feed URL turns out to fetch an HTML page telling me my access has been denied as the owner of the website, quote, has banned your access based on your browser's signature. It seems unlikely to me that you want to prevent a Python script from fetching the feed. WGET does work. So there might be a knob to twist at your end. 
Everything works fine once I added user agent spoofing to my page fetching code. Anyway, I thought you might like to know about the access restrictions Cloudflare has wrapped around your podcast. Mm. Hmm. So yes, I think it's fair to say we're not trying to stop people downloading the podcast by whatever means they choose. (laughs) Yes, <laughs> you, no. you, we're, we're being deliberate. You, you're going to have to rewrite your podcatcher in Python, in uh, in Perl, or in uh, Ruby, or something else. That's we're just being e- yeah. e- extreme about Python podcatchers. That's all. We're so, doing. so yes, this isn't actually our website that's doing this. Um, I, well, I don't know. It was about six weeks ago, something like that. Um, I put Cloudflare in front of the website to act as um, an edge cache for the static assets to help. Uh, with the load that the server was under. And one of the other advantages of Cloudflare is that it has um, some uh, application firewalling type capabilities. And those are turned on. And there's something about using Python in that way that's clearly in its um, heuristics that's blocking you. And sadly, um, can't whitelist those because we're not paying for the super prof- professional version of Cloudflare. We're using the uh, the free offering. So... Um, treat this as an op- opportunity to learn something new <laughs> <laughs> well it seems to work with the user agents briefing yes yes and we've not had anyone mention other podcatchers that don't work so um maybe it is just using raw python commands that's the problem yeah, yeah the, I, the, the, the signature string is you know something like python slash 2.7 you know when you when you use it in that way and maybe it's it's detecting that as a potential sort of um, script kitty attack type technique. Right. And and a normal podcatcher would probably announce itself as, you know, whatever as, it is, yeah. iTunes or HPod yeah. or whatever. And so it would, wouldn't fall foul of that, I see. So, yes, <laughs> just invent a cool user agent string for your podcatcher. And we'll keep an eye out for it <laughs> in our logs. Yeah. Yeah. The so Torin Doyle from Ireland emailed... In episode 28, you talked about ways of backing up. I use GR Sync to back up and sync my personal files and home directory config files between my desktop and laptop and external hard disk drive. GR Sync. I have never heard of that. Why have it's, I never um, heard of that? It's a GUI wrapper for R Sync. Oh, okay. Oh, that makes sense. Yes. And GNOME R Sync, <laughs> is it? Sorry, say that again. Is it like GNOME R Sync or something, or GUI uh, R-Sync? Yeah, or GTK or yeah, right. GUI. So one of those. Hmm. Awesome. Cool. Titanium Bunker tweeted at Ubuntu Podcast. What did you think about Hash Girls Can Code on BBC Three? I think it was a little patronising and lacking in actual coding. Um, I can't comment I on this because I don't watch half. television. Uh, I've watched most of it. It's probably a good summary there. Yeah, I, it should have been called Women Can Have Business Ideas. There weren't any girls and there weren't, wasn't any code. <laughs> there was a bit of code later oh, on, I didn't, but no. by that point we kind there of was, lost interest and we're yes. talking. Yeah, there was the, the scene where they looked up uh, looked at an app to um, show you what your makeup would look like. And then they asked how... Which was clever, which was clever technology. technology. And they asked how it worked and then they sort of the person sort of laughed and said, oh, that's where the code comes in. And then they went and looked at dresses. <laughs> so yes. that was good the, the quote i liked was that um the presenter said that they're trying to get across to the girls that technology doesn't just have to be computers i was like mm, okay she says it's everywhere i was like yeah okay it's in in shopping and music and fashion oh my all those girly God. things uh, that girls like yeah uh, and the thing the is and kittens yeah well you know obviously kittens but uh, the thing is they picked Six. It was the idea was there were six women, as you said, not girls really, because they're all in the like twenty two, twenty three, yeah, I think. Well, and they were, them. yeah, graduates or uh, there was one girl was on it, one girl, one woman was unemployed, and um, they're all different backgrounds. One was scientist, one was fashion, all these different backgrounds, but none of them were interested in technology except that they all used iPhones and stuff a lot, I think. Um, and so the idea was they were trying to get them into technology but they seem to confuse the idea of technology and business ideas and even later on when they were brainstorming technology ideas they were getting shot down because they weren't good enough as business ideas and I understand the idea of having making technology that's feasible to sell or give away but 
they were yeah they weren't even exploring how they would go about making the technology work which would surely have potentially triggered some interest in the technology yeah, i mean the whole point for me would be that you teach people to code which gives them the passion and then they they can apply that to a real problem not you say oh you have to come up with something that's commercially viable otherwise you, we're not going to teach yeah. you how to do it right but yeah. ideas are cheap it's the implementation that's the tricky part and yeah hmm. yeah hmm. Well, not, in some good news, though, there was also a, a program on BBC4, which was um, a documentary about Ada Lovelace, and that was brilliant. Oh, no spoilers. Yeah. I haven't seen that yet. I've got that queued up No, to me watch. neither. Uh, Lee from Bournemouth emailed. I've been a user of Ubuntu since version 11, and I have really enjoyed seeing it improve over time, but I did notice some stability issues with each new revision. Using a Dell Inspiron laptop, I was getting all kinds of silly errors, even after reinstalling. Anyway, I took the plunge and started trying different distros. I ended up with Linux Mint 17.2 Cinnamon because basically it works. No hassle. Unlike my Ubuntu experience. I plugged in a USB stick and it recognized it straight away and allowed me to access the data. Plug and play. Excellent. Well, excellent that you found happiness in a distribution built on Ubuntu. So that's good. <laughs> Bad that you had problems with Ubuntu. Sorry about that. Yeah. Enrique left a comment on the website ubuntupodcast.org. Sorry for getting Martin Wimpress into trouble. I didn't realise he was going to go so trying to go so many episodes without mentioning the epic barnstorming distribution that is Ubuntu Mate. <laughs> um, now, Enrique, when you um, when you contacted us a couple of weeks ago, I didn't thank you for your kind words about Ubuntu Mate. So I'd just like to say thank you. Um, I'm glad you like it. Am I in trouble yet? <laughs> <laughs> we love getting your feedback so please send it to us even the pointlessly mean stuff makes us laugh a little bit if it's short tweet us on at ubuntu podcast if it's less short but please no essays email us on show at ubuntu podcast.org or you can leave a comment on the relevant show notes on our website ubuntu podcast.org that's all for episode 30 we'll be back next week when we'll have more news comment and discussion. <laughs> Did Samantha fall asleep? Stunned, <laughs> stunned silence. Aggressive discussion. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe not. Yes. <laughs> when are we? It's nearly old camp, isn't it? it it's is. not far away. Yep, a month it and blimey. a week. A month. Yeah. Oh, golly, can't wait. Can't tonight. wait. Email us in if you're coming. Let us know. We'll bye see bye. You next time. Bye. 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 bye.